I've worked with Doug on, on many different issues. At football games, he and I often jointly call plays together and are upset when the coach doesn't follow our advice. Doug is, uh, behind that kind of self-effacing, shy exterior, uh, is a very, very strong commitment to social justice, uh, to Jewish values, uh, to the kind of world that um, many of us are fighting for, and he is fighting for among the hardest. He's had wonderful mentoring uh, through his own family, through Rhoda and Richard. He's had uh, a brother and a sister who are also philanthropic in their own way. But they like this idea of uh, civic participation. They all want to do something uh, that's bigger than themselves. I had the privilege of working closely with both Richard and Rhoda Goldman, and I know they would be so proud of Doug's accomplishments and leadership. My father always talks extremely fondly about his mother, someone that I think really inspired him. It would be my mother that I considered the truly great philanthropist. Her selflessness and devotion to things she believed in that really inspired him to be who he is. It's what's unique about our family and that we can look up to our grandparents as our heroes, not Michael Jordan, which I'm sure is a hero of his as well. Doug was trained as a doctor and particularly with regard to emergency doctoring because he reaches out to people in need. Uh, that's his instinct. Anytime we were on the road and there was a car accident, without fail, he would pull over. And it's not just helping individuals. He wants to, in a very profoundly Jewish sense, change the world for the better. But Doug knows very well because of his legacy that uh, it's one thing to be a person of success, but it's more important to be a person of value. And he's following that value tradition of a wonderful family in terms of reaching out to the general public and for the more for the public good, not only here in San Francisco in the Bay Area, but nationally and internationally. I think my mom is the perfect balance to my dad. Um, they're so different, but I think it works because they share the same values. You know, what are those values? Those values are Jewish values that have been in our family for six generations, that have been passed down you know, from generation to generation. He's a very intense and passionate person and has strong opinions about things. And so I love people who are intense and who are passionate. He's principled, he's smart, he's shrewd. You know, he thinks about these things and, and takes it very serious. Doug is fearless and so he's willing to step out and, and to state his beliefs. It's not about getting his name in, in, you know, in, the, uh, in the lights, but it's about doing the right thing. This has been particularly uh, evident in his defense of academic freedom and his defense of fairness in society. There is something terribly important about a public university, and there's something particularly important about the best public university in the world, which is the University of California at Berkeley. The students we have here, uh, the diversity of economic background, the extraordinary uh, appreciation they have for even being here, uh, their determination to change the world. Well, it's because of people like Doug and Lisa that this is possible. When an attempt was made to pass a divest from Israel resolution at the UC Student Senate, we reached out to Doug Goldman. I get involved in things that are important to me. Cal is not only my alma mater, I think it's a very special institution. For Doug, it was a perfect storm. It was a shadow cast on his beloved and my beloved university, Cal. It was a singling out of Israel, which in his mind and ours was a sense of profound injustice. As a Jew, a Jew of the Bay Area, the opportunity to make sure that my alma mater does not go down the wrong path on this and stands for that which I consider to be just and right was very important. And I remember two very specific things that he did that were enormously helpful in the successful effort to defeat the resolution. First was he worked very closely with his father, Richard, who had just been named Cal Alumnus of the Year, on a strong letter to the student government urging them to defeat the resolution. So I took the opportunity to try to fashion that expression on behalf of my father into something that would uh, just 
tune it a little bit better, shall we say. And secondly, Doug spoke personally to the student body president, laying out all the reasons that he thought he should veto the resolution, an action that the student body president undertook. He was effective as president of the Goldman Environmental Prize, writing letters to foreign governments around certain prize winners or environmental issues. Again, I think there's a parallel between JCRC and the Environmental Prize and this kind of grassroots mentality that uh, certainly is all interconnected. I'd rather do instead of say, I'd rather have my actions speak for me. He's special in that sense because it's not a, coming from a place of privilege, it's coming from a place of how do we get this done. And whether it's behind the scenes, whether it's in the forefront, he's going to get it done. I have this personal theory of life that as you look at any individual, the first circle is the one that is around themselves. And the next circle is one of family. And then as you keep going out from there, to me the next circle is the Jewish community. And then lastly is the greater community. Doug is a role model for the Jewish alumni at Cal. Because Doug cares deeply about the Cal community, and he supports that in a significant way. And at the same time, he cares about the Jewish community at campus. And for him, as a Cal alumni, what is critically important is not only supporting the Cal community and not only supporting the Jewish community on campus, but supporting both of them as a manifestation of his Cal pride as well as his Jewish commitment. It is remarkable to me how closely aligned JCRC's values and Doug's family's own values are. To me, JCRC is, the, is in many ways the voice of the Jewish community. What would the world be like if we didn't have it? Promoting a just society and a secure Jewish future is what we both stand for. I can't imagine doing the work we do, and I can't imagine San Francisco without Doug Goldman and his family place to get a little insight into our dad is on the dance floor. I think nobody expects him to boogie the way he does. That is very but true. He's very into dancing. I always find him fun. I mean, I, you know, sitting next to him at a dinner, uh, kind of walking with him. I mean, he always has something interesting to say. Rolling out. Looks long. This year, Doug and Lisa graciously invited me to a Cal football game, and it was a wonderful day sharing stories with Doug and Lisa. And during the football game, Doug leaned over to me and asked me if I had met the chancellor yet. And I'd said I had met the chancellor. And he leaned over back and he said, you know what, I want to introduce you to the chancellor. And it was at that time I realized that for Doug and Lisa, it wasn't just about writing a check. I teach in a school that bears the name, the Goldman School of Public Policy, uh, which is testament to not only the Goldman family's dedication uh, to good government and policies that help everyone, but also Doug and Lisa's dedication in particular, uh, because it's not just the money, it's also their ongoing involvement that counts. Always be part of the solution, not part of the problem. I think that's a, a legacy that uh, he wants to continue. He learned it from his family and he wants to pass it on to his own children to be a part of that legacy and to build it, to help it evolve and grow is a special opportunity and responsibility for me.